Hey guys, Rust Belt Collector here, and today we are taking a look at a G.I. Joe Classified Series figure, one that I was anticipating very highly. When I first saw this was released, I got very excited. I'm even more excited to have it in hand finally, and we're going to take a look at it today because, yeah, we don't talk about G.I. Joe enough on this channel, and it comes down to I just can't get G.I. Joe where I'm at in my area. They very rarely restock them. And I have pre-orders, but they just take so long to actually get in that it kind of tends to be that it's not even worth making a video on at that point because, you know, it's like six months after it's released and I'm like the last person in the world to get it. But with this one, I, I can't help but make a video about it. I am so excited to get this Snake Eyes and Timber Alpha Commandos pack. This, it just looks so cool. In fact, it looks great just in the packaging. Like, it just... It stands out very nicely against the blue background, very high contrast with all the accessories cast in black, and then of course Snake Eyes just in his classic all black uniform, or a Snake Eyes outfit. It's not really a uniform, it's his stealthy ninja outfit. But either way, it looks amazing. This packaging has always been a real standout for the Classified series, and yeah. Let's take a close-up look here. On the side, we have this nice artwork of the Commando Snake Eyes, and that wraps around to this side where we have this really nice artwork once again. On the back, we have this really large, this is much larger than the single-carded figures. We have this large artwork piece. It looks so good, showcasing pretty much all the figures that we currently have, and some that were just recently re uh, revealed, like, for instance, the Cobra Vipers up here, the Alley Vipers. I am so excited to get my hands on those. I've got some pre-ordered, of course, because that is, like, my favorite design apart from the Vipers. So, yeah, this artwork is so reminiscent of the classic Joe artwork from, like, the comics and stuff, but it brings a really nice, gritty, realistic spin to it and I'm here for it. And then on this side of course we have all these different symbols that represent his different levels of skill I guess. Uh, you can look it up on the website and it says what each of these symbols is. I'm not gonna do that in this video but you're welcome to do it if you would like. And this is number 30 in the classified line. But with all of that out of the way I say we break this open and take a look at the figures. And having a look at him here out of the package, it, it's amazing. It's exactly what I was hoping for with this figure. We'll break it down piece by piece, but just, I mean, looking at it like here, this is what you need out of a Snake Eyes Commando and Timber the Wolf. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a 360 spinning little table this time because somebody uh, who will go unnamed, uh, we'll just say it was the intern uh, Kevin, forgot to get AAA batteries. And this thing takes AAAs, not AA's apparently. So... Yeah, no spinning around for this particular review, but it will return in the future. However, I don't think that we need it to be able to just appreciate how cool this is. I mean, absolutely, this is classic G.I. Joe, classic Commando Snake Eyes. As usual, around here, we start with the accessories, and first off, we have this... I guess it would kind of be a rifle or maybe a submachine gun. It's hard to say. It's definitely not based on one specific weapon in, in like the real world. But if I had to guess, it looks more like a 9mm conversion of some sort of M4 variant. And you can, in fact, remove this magazine. It appears to be similar to like the plasma energy type things that they gave with Wave 1. Similar to like what Roadblock had where he had an energy cannon or something. Overall, it's hard to say what they're going for exactly with the lore there, but it is nice to see them transitioning more towards a more realistic style of weapon, because this definitely could pass as uh, something real world, something you could have today. And it looks really nice. Although it doesn't have any paint apps, the sculpt is there, and I love that removable magazine. And next up we have this, which appears to be based off of like the UMP-45. Absolutely love the detail on these once again, and yeah, magazines are removable, and they've given these enough tolerance and even like a little bit of a, like you can kind of hear that, it, it sort of pops in, and so it's not going to fall out, it definitely has a, a snug fit where it's not going to just drop out randomly, but it's also not going to be so difficult to get out that you just don't even bother. Once again, I love the realistic flair that they're giving these now. I didn't hate the nerf guns, you know, I thought that was kind of a fun little uh, crossover between two Hasbro properties, but 
I know a lot of fans weren't very fond of it, so I'm glad that they are giving us some more realistic options, though I hope that they don't completely stop doing the nerf guns, maybe include like one nerf gun with every realistic weapon, something like that. I could I could get behind that. Then on down to the Uzi. This is a very classic like 1980s, 1990s G.I. Joe accessory, so I love that they've included it here. And like the other accessory that we'll talk about next, it does have the option I can just get it loose here. It does have the option for a suppressor on the end to keep that element of surprise and stealth. So I absolutely love that little accessory as well. It just pegs right onto the end of the barrel. And once again, there is enough tolerance there to keep it from falling off or anything like that. It fits snugly, but not so tight that it can't come off either. This one does not have a removable magazine, but it kind of makes sense because it's a uh, be a very small piece of plastic. So I, I get why they didn't do that with this one. And finally, we have his sidearm, what looks to be like a 9mm Beretta, perhaps. And yeah, once again, realistic style. Doesn't have a removable magazine, but you can transition that suppressor from the Uzi to the pistol. And that's also very nice to see. And these weapons are also compatible with the suppressor from the first wave Snake Eyes, where he comes with more of like a Nerf gun stylized weapon. So if you want to have both of these suppressed at the same time, you can. I think it's actually the exact same mold. This is the one from the old Snake Eyes. This is the one from this pack. And then finally for this figure, we have his knife, his giant combat knife, which has a really nice metallic sheen to it. it looks really, really cool. And as you saw, that will just sheath right here onto his hip. His sidearm can do the same. You can just slide it right into the holster there. And then the suppressor actually just has a little slot right there on the front which is really nice. Now I guess the only real downside here is that now you have three weapons and no place to store them. There isn't any kind of peg system or anything on his back. There is a hole there, but there's no backpack or anything that would allow for these two to strap on. So that's kind of a bummer, but it's not a big deal. I mean, you know, if you have a bag or something to store these in, you're not going to lose them, and then you can equip him with maybe one or two of these weapons, and it will look absolutely awesome. Now, the figure overall looks absolutely stunning. I love the look. I mean, even though this is really just simply cast in black plastic, it looks nice. The sculpt detail, the variation of the sculpt detail itself is very nice to see with the different textures in fabric, armor plates here and there. It looks... It looks so good. I feel like the classified line leans heavily into modernizing classic designs rather than trying to make new ones, and they pull it off really well, especially in this instance. They've done a good job of adapting the Commando Snake Eyes. Now, as far as parts reuse, I'm not the person to go to for that. I don't know what exactly got reused. If I had to guess, this upper torso and arm is probably from Beachhead, just judging by the type of fabric. The legs might be new, they might be reused, but I think if you want to see more of that broken down, I would definitely check out a channel like The Foosh. The Foosh knows all that stuff. I don't. Um, I don't know what parts got reused on what figure and all that. And uh, personally, I don't, I don't mind too much. Like, they do a good job of mixing and matching the different parts and making a figure look new without it actually being 100% new. So it doesn't really bother me. As long as they blend it in well and they, they kind of hide it in a way, then I don't mind whatsoever. Now, while this figure is amazing and I absolutely love it, I think the highlight for just about everyone is getting your very own classified scale timber. And yeah, it's it's a highlight for me, for sure. Seeing a highly articulated 1 12th scale wolf is amazing. And having it come with an alternate head is also such a great choice by Hasbro. You know, it gives you different posing options. You can have him be a little bit more docile or you can have him be very menacing, and I, I love that. It's such a great choice by them to include it, and well worth the price, I think. In terms of paint apps, I love the way that they've blended the different colors down into like a gradient, so you have the really dark color here along his spine, and then it kind of blends down into the lighter colors along his legs and underbelly, with some highlights here and there kind of airbrushed on. And what they've done with the eyes is something really fantastic. You can see when the light hits him just right, they've actually got what what might be like gold paint, I'm not entirely sure, but they've actually gone in there with something very shiny, so you get that kind of husky eye glow, you know, if you've ever seen like a husky with those shimmering blue eyes, 
it looks really nice here they've also painted the nose even in a glossy black paint so once again they've just done a great job of adding those little details like that to just really make this stand out as a figure overall and since we have timber here in hand we might as well start with him for articulation now this guy is super articulated which is really great to see for a character like timber you want to have that agility that kind of lifelike pose ability where it can be a little bit more agile not as clunky and yeah it's just super nice to see so starting it off um, you can actually pop the head off obviously to replace the two and it has a rather large dumbbell joint there which gives it a good range of motion let's just pop on the alternate face there it is it's a little bit tougher to pop on and off it's definitely not as easy as like a uh, a Marvel Legend, let's say, but you can get it on there. As you can see, a little bit of effort, but it does set on there very nicely. It's got a really nice range of motion just because they have a really nice opening there, and then the longer extended peg allows just for some really, really nice motion there. There is a bit of a joint here at the lower neck, but it doesn't seem to have much motion or range. That may just be there to uh, to kind of conceal some of the other articulation that they had to pack in here. So, I mean, there's a little bit of a twist there, and you can kind of get it up and down, but mostly it's just there for show. And then down to the mid-torso, you have another ball joint. So you can get some really nice side-to-side -side poses in case you want them to maybe be running or just kind of like curling around like that. Then of course it can go in as well as crunch outward, which is really great. You could kind of get like a jumping or like a like a leaping pose with that type of articulation there with the back. And then down to the tail, it's just a simple hinge and swivel. So you can swivel it all the way around. You can put it up, you can put it down. Um, and there's really not much more that you would need there. I, I personally think that I like the silhouette of just the solid tail. If they'd added another joint, it would have broken that silhouette and been kind of difficult to conceal. So I think this is the right way to go there. Then moving on to the legs, you can see there's a lot of articulation going on here. So both the shoulders and the hips have uh, ball joints in there, which allows them to kind of splay outward as well as rotate forward and backwards. Then what I guess you would technically consider the elbow is a hinge and swivel, so you can swivel it outward as well as out to there and into there. And then moving down to the wrist, you have a hinge, so you can hinge it to there, hinge it forward to there, and then you have a hinge and a rocker for the paw, so you can hinge it forward and back as well as side to side. Then for the hind leg here, you have a hinge and a swivel once again, so basically just the inverse of the upper leg here, but you can swivel that side to side, though it's hindered a little bit by the fur. You can hinge it to there, and then you can straighten it all the way out to there. Moving down, you have another hinge, so hinge back to there, forward to there, and then hinge and rocker for the paw. So again, you've got a really good range of motion going on here. I don't think that you could get this into a like a laying down or a prone position, but there is a lot of action poses that you could get including more of like a leaping pose also more of like a you know a slinking or like a prowling pose for maybe when uh, when him and snake eyes are being a little bit more stealthy on one of their missions you know there's there's all kinds of possibilities here one of the things that i would recommend uh for both myself because i haven't done this and for anybody that's maybe looking for a good pose or uh, for toy photography, that kind of thing. I would look online of like wolves in the wild when they're when they're hunting as a pack, when they're just out and about. Look at some pictures and try and base your poses off of those. I think that the articulation is there. Certainly, you could pretty much get any pose that you see a wild animal getting. And uh, yeah, you know, if you want some really good lifelike poses, I would say go straight to the source. Find some good images online of an actual wolf out there doing its thing, and I bet you you could do some really amazing things with this figure. Now then for Snake Eyes, I don't think we're gonna really see anything new here, but we'll go over it regardless. Right up at the top, you have a hinge and swivel going into the head, and then you have a ball joint in the torso at the base of the neck. So that ball joint gives you some range forward and back here, as well as some forward and back there. And then the hinge and the swivel at the head allows for more of a rotation back there and more of a rotation forward to there and of course that swivel also allows you to you know look side to side all that good stuff down to the shoulders once again with these gi joes the articulation is so nice you have the butterfly shoulders hinge and swivel so all the way around up to there just about to 90 that little pouch there on the shoulder actually does inhibit that but 90 is all you really need you can get a nice epic t posing snake eyes if you feel so inclined then down to the shoulders, you have a bicep swivel, 
all the way around, double hinged elbows that get you well past 90. We might see, I think we're definitely actually going to see uh, single jointed elbows soon in the G.I. Joe line, similar to how they're doing with the Star Wars line. But because they're doing so much reuse right now, that might be a ways down the road. But eventually, I think when they have to do new sculpts, they're definitely going to do single jointed elbows and knees. Then down to the wrists, you have a hinge and a swivel. So all the way around, up and down for the left hand and then for the right hand, it's in and out, which is kind of odd. That seems to be like the inverse of how it usually is with uh, these types of figures. Usually the trigger hand is the up and down. I'm not sure how that will affect articulation overall when posing with weapons. I'm not opposed to it. It's definitely still serviceable, but just something to take note of. Now there is an ab crunch here underneath this rubber uh, vest, and you really can't do much with it. There's not not really anything that's there that can be moved with this vest on and there is no way to take the vest off not that you would really want to i guess but you know maybe you're a psychopath like that <laughs> maybe you're a customizer so there is a joint under there but it's really nothing that can be used with this particular figure moving down to the hips you have a ball joint a thigh swivel as well as a drop down so you can drop that leg down position it forward which just gives you a little bit more range on that forward and then when you're just at like a relaxed standing position, you can shift it back up just like so, and it becomes a little bit more seamless there. Now, outwards up the hips are a little bit tricky. I tried to shift this holster down a little bit, but it is really stressing that plastic because of the pocket molded into the thigh there. So I don't really know how long I want to keep it there, but uh, yeah, they do kind of encounter various aspects of the figure when you try and do an outward. So the knife hits the waist there and the holster encounters that pouch there. You can kind of try and like weasel it underneath there, but that's kind of weird. And it, yeah, you get a decent outward regardless, but it's not necessarily as far as it would be if you didn't have that pouch and this knife here. Of course, you have the thigh swivel there allowing some really nice rotation. And then down to the knees, you have a double jointed knee giving you a really solid range, wrapping it all the way around to the back there. And then as with these G.I. Joe figures, pretty much all of them have this, I think. There is a swivel here. Basically, I think this is actually more so for them so that they can just swap out different boots for characters as they reuse parts. Either way, not a big deal. It, it works really well for this figure and just is a nice added point of articulation. And then down to the shoes, to the boots, to the ankles, whatever it is, you know, you have the hinge pointing to there, forward to there, and then forward-facing rocker giving you that nice side to side. Now moving Timber to the side just for a moment, we've got Snake Eyes here. I just want to compare him really quick to the previous iterations of Snake Eyes that we've gotten. First off, we have the Wave 1 Snake Eyes, and we'll get him positioned there. And then we have the movie Snake Eyes, Origins Snake Eyes, I guess, and they're pretty much all the same height. You could stack them up very nicely next to each other. No, I have not seen the Snake Eyes movie. I probably never will, unfortunately, because they took the two premises of the character Snake Eyes and threw them out the window in the trailer. Uh, Snake Eyes, if you don't know from the comics, does not speak and you never see his face. Those are like his defining attributes as a as a character. He doesn't speak, uh, I think, out of obligation in the comics. Like, he made a vow, basically, until his, his teacher was avenged. He would not speak. He doesn't speak at all. And they took away his two defining features in the movie. So I don't really have a reason to see it, I guess. But anyways, um, there is Cobra Commander. Let's actually put him directly next to the Commando Snake Eyes here. Yeah, they're, they're all about the same height. That's kind of what you would expect from a six inch line, I feel like. And yeah, it works really well. I think these all look amazing. Personally, my favorite still is Wave 1 and also this Commando. I'm, I dig the movie one. It's got some nice aesthetics to it, but it's, uh, it's maybe just a little bit too futuristic for me. I like a little bit more of the grounded aspects that come with these two. And it's also actually worth noting that, I mean, if you're going off of the original 90s figures or 80s figures, I forget when the original one came out, but technically this would be closer to the Snake Eyes that originally came with Timber. The standard, I think, would be V2 Snake Eyes with the, the visor and everything was what came with the original timber figure and the commando i don't think ever was packed with uh timber but i'm a little bit like sketchy on my knowledge of the gi joe line as a whole so i could be wrong about that i do know though that this was the first snake eyes or you know the approximation of this snake eyes was what came with the first timber figure however you choose to display it you know it doesn't really matter it's it's all personal preference i think both of these snake eyes figures are awesome for different reasons you know looking at this one where the the buckles are actually painted 
I like that they're not painted on this one because it just feels like it's super stealthy. <laughs> you know, like this was be this would be the snake eyes that's you know maybe painted all of his buckles and anything shiny just a dull black color so that it would blend in more easily when he's on a stealthy mission. You know, it just it makes more sense. Whereas this one is a little bit more tactical. It's a little bit more combat related. This is more like Splinter Cell or something where he's you know, super stealthy, and I think that's kind of the point, but either way, it looks amazing, and it goes so well with this Timber figure. I cannot wait to get this out and do some toy photography with it. I'll definitely be posting up some of that over on my Instagram, and if you feel like checking it out, uh, link is in the bio, so you can you can follow me over there if you feel so inclined. And if you want to pick this up for yourself, I got this one off of Hasbro Pulse. It took a little bit to actually get it shipped to me, but it did finally ship. However, um, as of recording this, the 1st of December is when I'm recording this, it was still in stock over on GameStop and BestBuy.com. So if you want to pick up this pack, it is still in stock as of recording. And, you know, if you're a fan of G.I. Joe, if you're a fan of Snake Eyes, even if you're just a fan of like 112, you know, this is a good wolf character and it's also a good kind of military character. It's not super wacky or zany like maybe Cobra Commander or Destro. So this could work in a number of different ways. I think it's a fantastic pack, definitely worth picking up. And, you know, the interchangeable wolf head, the various weapons that Snake Eyes comes with, it's all just, it adds so much value to it. And I think it's definitely a, a good pickup if you're a fan. But anyways, that is where we are going to wrap up this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful evening, noon, or night. Depending on when you're watching this, you know how it goes. You know my outro by now, probably. As always, there's a link down in the description if you want to check out my Instagram or any of my other things that are linked down there. I do so appreciate all you guys that have decided to subscribe over here and follow me over on Instagram. It means a lot to me, and I, I really do appreciate that. But yeah, that's that's all there is. So, you know, be kind to one another. And as always, I will catch you all in the next video.